Okay, this video talks about pointers part three. So we've talked about pointers to an object, right? We talked about pointers to a single object, pointers to an array of objects. So you create the class as you've always done, and you've seen how to create a pointer to an object. And after that, the object works the same way, but it's a dynamic object which can be created and deleted during runtime. So now we are going to move on to seeing how to create pointers as member variables. Okay, and this is ultimately the goal for our project four, where instead of having these arrays that we had before with static arrays with, you know, this is what we had before. We didn't have a pointer, if you remember, you had max car. Okay, instead of that, we are going to have pointers so we can allocate memory during runtime for this array. And we're going to do it in both our classes. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So starting with a class, you modify the class to have a private data member of a pointer to a char, for example, because this is eventually going to point to a char array. The quantity, the int, doesn't change. It stays the same way. Things you need to do for this pointer variable. Remember from pointers from your previous videos, you must allocate memory before the pointer can be used. Remember, we talked about all of those in part one and part two. So you must allocate memory, and this has to be done in the constructor because now it is an object. It's a class, and it's a data member, right? So in the constructor, before you initialize anything, you must allocate memory. When you create the pointer, it is not initialized. It is not pointing to anything. So this is how you initialize it. You must allocate memory first title equals new char and then max car. And we do this in the constructor. And then we do the string copy. Okay, so don't just do a string copy. Remember before all we did was a string copy. So if you look back at your old code, you will see that. Instead now, we have to allocate memory for a new char array with that many characters, and then we can copy from no title into title. And then quantity, nothing changes in the integers, okay? This is only for the arrays, the char arrays for right now, or an array of objects. Integers doesn't matter. It doesn't take up too much space, so we just leave the masses. Here is a constructor with parameters, the same way we have parameters coming in, all that, nothing changes there. Before you string copy, you must allocate memory. This is why I say if your project three is done well, then all you're doing is changing these char arrays and any arrays that we have in the classes to a dynamic memory allocated pointers or arrays. Okay, so in the mutator function, again, you check if title is pointing to anything, delete the memory that was previously allocated. Why? So we can create enough memory just for the new title. Why create? an array with 101 characters when we don't need it. So what this is doing is if title is pointing to anything, it says delete title, notice the square bracket to delete an array pointer, set it equal to null or null PTR, then allocate just enough memory for new title, string length of new title, plus one. The plus one is for the null character. Remember the end of every char array, we have a null character. This is very important where the parenthesis goes and where the score bracket goes. It's very, very important. Otherwise, we can have bugs that is going to be very hard for us to trace. So string length of this new title coming in, just enough memory. So if it's Lion King, it'll be just enough for the Lion King or Happy Feet or whatever it is. That many characters plus one. So allocate memory just for that, then do the string copy. Okay. Okay, so the destructor. Now we have to do something with the destructor because we are allocating memory using the new. So the destructor, as we've talked about before, it's a special member function. It does not have a return type. It has the same name as the class. All those things are the same. It begins with a tilde, and it looks like this. Scope resolution operator, the class with the scope resolution operator with a tilde in front of it, no parameters. And in there, what do you do? You delete title and set title equals null PTR or null, okay? In fact, it's better to have a check. I'll show you the code where you check if title is pointing to something, then you delete it and set it equal to null PTR. The destructor gets called when an object goes out of scope. 
So when you leave a function, for example, in a function, if you create an object, when you leave the function, the object goes out of scope and it calls its own destructor, it destroys its own memory that we allocated and then goes out of scope. That's called garbage cleanup. Otherwise, we have memory leaks, right? Okay, so when is the destructor called? It's called automatically anytime the object goes out of scope. Can you call a destructor? No, you cannot call a destructor. When, when your object goes out of scope, which could be when the program ends or when you leave a function, all those locally created objects, it gets called and it goes out of scope. Okay, so we've seen all of that. Um, pointers and classes, here are some things to know. When you have pointers and classes, there, is, there are some peculiarities that you have to deal with. Okay, so when you have two video objects, for example, A video and B video, the objects are not created using pointers. Okay, notice here, uh, video, A video, no pointer. It's just a regular video like you used to create before with parameters. And B video is created using the default constructor. Okay, so there are two different objects just like this. This one has no title. It has a quantity of zero. It has an address that it's pointing to. you. This is just, again, whatever it was before, right? An array, and this is the address of that array. Now, what happens when you copy from A video to B video? Remember, this title that we are talking about is a dynamic array is that not that picture this picture this is the dynamic array that we created in the class okay the, the the object is not a pointer but the title in there is a pointer remember that's what we did when we created the class here we said that is a, a pointer and we allocated memory for it right here and did all of that stuff right so those are pointers title and title whereas the object itself is just a regular object now here's the problem from A video, if you copy everything into B video, if you use the assignment operator, what happens is it copies everything and it copies the address exactly the same way. So this was pointing to the address of 0x200, the Lion King. It copies that into B video as well. So now look, both of them are pointing to the same array. This is called a shallow copy. And the problem with this is, if this goes out of scope, then this goes out of scope. Remember, the destructor calls the um, or the when it, when it goes out of scope it calls its own destructor which destroys this title meaning the lion king the memory is deallocated and this one now is not pointing to anything so this causes what is called a shallow copy for two reasons this is it causes a memory leak okay because this is now pointing to nothing and also here's the other problem so when you look here delete a video if you delete a video this gets deleted and now this memory. So this gets, first of all, here's a problem. Let's go back to this. The minute you do this copy from A video to B video, here is the memory leak. This no title is left hanging because it has now copied this address into this right here. And this is pointing to the Lion King. Now what happens to this memory that we allocated using the default constructor? That is left hanging. That is our memory leak. And we also have the problem where if we delete this a video or this object goes out of scope, then this goes out of scope and then this is left hanging. So we have two problems. One is the memory leak that happens when this gets yanked out of here and gets pointed to this because of this copy. Okay. And when this gets deleted, this object goes out of scope, which means this char array is gone, the memory is deallocated, and B video does not have a title. And if you do a print, it will go crashing on you. So the, the lesson to learn is do not copy anything using the assignment operator. Do not copy objects. We have been doing this. We've copied an object to the array in project three. That's what we do. Do not do that. You will have to actually go and use the accessor and mutator functions and get it into temporary variables. So you use the access of functions, get it into the temp variable. This is actually, um, yeah, you initialize it, you do it, or you pass it as a parameter and you get it. Let me fix that. That should not be like that. That should be like this. You call get title, you get it, and then you call set title and you send it and you set it. That's what you should be doing. So we should be doing all the detailed deep copy as opposed to this, which is a shallow copy. That is the main takeaway from this part three of pointers, okay? Now let's take a look at the code that I have with this. So what we are doing really is, if you look on the right side here, 
let's take a look at let's go to 162 lo pointers video part part two let's see if i typed all that correctly there we go so we have part two on both sides let's look at video.h on the right side and video.cpp on the left side ei okay and then go to line one okay so if you look here notice in my private data members now i have a char star title as the only change i'm making i'm making that char array a pointer and nothing else nothing else changes and then you go back go back here to your cpp file in the default constructor i allocate memory first thing you have to do is allocate memory then the rest of the code stays the same we copy no title to title but allocate memory i do nf4 max car here okay then here in the constructor with parameters you allocate memory just enough for the temp title coming in plus one so temp title plus one string length of temp title plus one then you string copy that okay okay the destructor if title if title is pointing to something if it is not equal to null that's what that says delete and set it equal to null okay okay then where else do we have to change it in our mutator function in set title why do we change it in set title we change it because the default constructor allocates way too much memory for this remember max car we don't need that much so we delete the one that is pointing to this part is very important if you don't delete it then you'll have memory leaks because it's already pointing to something then you say well let me take it and make it point to something else anytime you do that remember you're yanking it away from the existing memory and there's no other way to go back and delete that memory so make sure you check checking is important because if it's not pointing to something and you try to delete it it crashes as well so if title delete title set it equal to null then make it point to this um, new char array enough for string length of new title plus one just enough memory and then string copy that's the mutator function okay and nothing else changes anything related to the char array that we are making a pointer that needs to be changed is what we change okay so we are going to continue working on uh, the video list class now we changed the video.h class to have pointers as data members. Now we are going to work on the video list class where again, we have an array as a private data member. Remember we had a, an array of videos, the capacity 20. We are going to change that to have a dynamic array. It's a pointer and I do have a capacity that I have in as a constant in video.h. So here I added a capacity as a local data member, or I should say as a private data member, because remember it's a dynamic array, which means during runtime, if I have added 20 elements and if I run out of room in my array, I can make my array grow. I can make it bigger during runtime. I don't have to stop and rerun my program. So by having a private data member as a variable, I can essentially say when my array capacity has been reached, I can, I can expand it. Okay, there are ways to expand it. So which is why I have this. So here is my video star list, which is the pointer to a video or an array of videos. In this case, we will create an array of videos. So it will replace our static array that we had before. Everything else is the same. Nothing changes here, right? The constructor, everything can be done with the pointer object or with the object that has a pointer, I should say. So then if you go on the left-hand side window here, I'm looking at all the constructors that I've created. The most important thing to remember is to allocate memory for this list, which is a pointer to point to a new, video array of videos and the capacity is going to be this variable which is set to the constant okay eventually we can change this capacity to as it grows we can increment it so if i've reached a capacity of 20 i can add five elements at a time or 10 elements at a time so i can change capacity to say capacity equals capacity plus five right that means i've added five more elements to it and i can redo my array as my program is running 
So anyway, the most important thing is to allocate memory. List equals new video. So here's where you allocate memory for an array of videos of whatever the capacity may be. Set count equals zero. That's the default constructor. And that's all I have in this. I don't have any other constructors. In our project, we will see how to do the constructor when you read from a file. In this case, I'm not doing that. This is just a starting point for us to look at how to create um, arrays of objects or object with a pointer in its class, which is what this is. Then a destructor must delete this dynamic array, this dynamic memory that we allocated. So if list, that means if list, which is my dynamic pointer, the memory that I allocated here, if it is pointing to something, then I want to delete it. If it's not pointing to anything, then let's not delete it. That's what that says. If list, if it's pointing to something, then delete it. Remember how you delete, notice the syntax for deleting an array, and you set list equals null or null PTR. That's the destructor. Then we go on to add a new video. Here's where the next change comes in. When we add a video, this is how we used to do it before. Notice this statement where I would simply take a video and add it to my list and increment count by using the assignment operator. We cannot do that anymore. So if you remember from my, um, here, I'm going to open up my slideshow real quick. If you remember the slideshow, we talked about this, where we had the shallow copy. And if you look here, go down to shallow copy. So we create two objects. And if we do this assignment operator, watch what happens. We pull away the pointer from this no title and make it point to this. So we have a memory leak here. That's one of the problems. And the other problem is when this object goes out of scope, it takes the title with it because the destructor will destroy it and this object will not have anything it's pointing to. So we do not want to do this. What we want to do is a deep copy, meaning we want to be able to allocate memory for them separately and be able to do each individual data member has to be copied. So do this deep copy, create temporary variables. I have two data members for every video item, the title and the year. So I create temporary variables. I We are copying from a video on the right hand side, right, to the array. So call a video's accessor functions, get them into the temp title, then take that temp title and temp year and send it to this. So you're essentially getting from this, putting it into the left hand side, into the list object. So we can just simply directly say x equals 5 or x equals y. Instead, you get from a video, put it into um, the list video. That's all it is. And so you will do this for your, you know, if you're doing a task, you should have, you should do it for your task name, task due date, and um, the course number. So you'd have three things. You get from a task three things, you put into list three things, and then you increment count. That's all it is. Okay. Then uh, the search, nothing changes really. You search the same way, you print the same way. None of those things will change. Okay, that's that's all the change that we make. Now, the good news is main doesn't change at all. Nothing changes in main. The only changes you're really making in this phase is your header file and your CPP file for the individual class. Notice my main stays exactly the same. If you did everything right in project three or in the task previous one, you don't have to change anything. Now, you didn't do any of this in your task homework two, so you might have to add some of these things in homework two for pointers where you are actually adding the menu and adding the list class and things like that. But when you get to project three or project four, it should be easier. Okay, so now I can run this. I compiled it. And if I run this, it should work um, well without any segmentation fault or anything like that. If it does, and the good thing you should do is you should test everything. So you add a video, print it, and see if it's there. Uh, okay, I didn't add my ear properly. When you add a video, make sure you add multiple videos and or your multiple songs, multiple tasks, whatever it is that you're adding um, and make sure it actually works all the way through. It doesn't crash halfway through. Search. If I put in the year name or year number, it should search. And when you quit, it shouldn't give you any segmentation fault all the way through. It should work well. So that will complete this part of it where we have essentially created um, pointers in the class for a single video and in the class for the list of videos.